Um, I'm proud to be part of the Royal College of Psychiatrists, one of the few colleges that celebrate the South Asian History Month in the last few years. Um, to me, and I'm sure to many of my South Asian colleagues, that the celebration isn't just an acknowledgement um, of our identity, but it's a validation and a celebration of diversity as well as social inclusion and cohesion and a step in the right direction, really. Um, many of us have created a home here in the UK, having left families, loved ones, traditions, our culture behind. Um, whilst we serve as doctors in the, in the UK, in the NHS, um, and we've missed a lot of family celebrations, get-togethers, important occasions, funerals, um, and had quite a lot of losses. So it just means that this is more of an acknowledgement of all that we've lost in order to create a home here. But also for the people who have been brought up here, it's an acknowledgement of what the richness of what they bring to the culture um, and the melting pot of multicultural Britain that is today. Um, we all know that in the pandemic, uh, a lot of South Asian doctors, nurses, allied health professionals um, died while serving on the front line. And I see it as a tribute to their services um, and their lives. Well, coming from a different culture, um, requires a certain degree of openness to other perspectives, other ways of thinking. And I believe um, as a South Asian psychiatrist, I do hope to bring that along with enthusiasm, uh, that certain degree of resilience and positivity. Um, and being trilingual, I think that's helped some of my um, South Asian patients, especially women whose uh, narratives and stories and journeys it, it's been a privilege to be part of and I think those stories might have got lost um, if there was nobody to, to speak to them in their language um, so I think that's that's been helpful to my patients coming from a family uh, that lived under one roof uh, at some at one point there were four generations under one roof and I think that's taught me the value of involving carers and families and always listening to their perspective and that's helped me uh, start up a carer support group um, because the carers know their, their uh, patient, their family member quite well and I think sometimes we as professionals run the risk of assuming things so I, I, whilst I understand there's a fine line between not undermining the individual's autonomy uh, versus being sort of absorbed in that family identity. But I think you've got to be able to hold both those perspectives together. Um, and I'd say there's another bit is the, the, the mindfulness practices uh, from the East, from Southeast Asian culture that we bring as a psychiatrist are um, the role of meditation, prayer, really living in the moment in the here and now and mindfulness practices like these you can you can actually then relate to what your parent, uh, patients are saying. Um, another thing which um, many of our mental health patients have said is that they feel as if they're on the fringes of society, they look and feel different. Um, and so many of my colleagues, including myself, yes, we look, we look different, but that's also enabled quite a few of my patients to really um, be comfortable knowing that I get what it's like to be different and to actually feel different. So I would hope that, that those are the qualities um, that enable us to be a bit more diverse and open to other perspectives as a South Asian psychiatrist. I believe my, my concern as a South Asian psychiatrist has been uh, one of the groups that we need to engage and look after it are the South Asian women in the UK. Um, from all the epidemiological studies in the UK, we found out that the rates of depression are two thirds more than that of South Asian men, uh, or compared to white Caucasian women and the, the, their counterparts. And also the rate of deliberate self-harm and attempted and completed suicide is quite high, which is quite alarming um, 
And there have been a lot of there has been a lot of work done around looking at these factors and what leads to it. And it's probably that sort of stigma and shame of having uh, a mental health disorder, not being able to seek help, because most of these women have a sort of a cultural sense of upholding the family's honour, not seeking help on time, sometimes not not uh, related to immigration. Um, they have this degree of social isolation. They don't know which services to access, and hence those are the barriers, along with language as well. So we, we really need to look at um, adapting and targeting interventions which are culturally appropriate to them and also acceptable to them so that we don't marginalise them um, and give them a real sense of the fact that we do, we do understand their culture and respect that. Uh, the second challenge that we're really coming up against uh, is the fact that there's a lot of intergenerational conflict between the generation that's more attuned to the British culture and that's very much part of their identity. Whilst the parents are desperately trying to hold on to their values and traditions for very good reason, um, however that can lead to conflicts, um, that can lead to uh, sort of rifts between families and families are a really important part of a lot of uh, the Asian, South Asian culture especially. So we're, we're finding ourselves in a new world, a modern world, where we've got to find a way to navigate those tensions quite carefully whilst giving respect to the individual's autonomy, but also uh, being able to disentangle what's culture and what's family and what is religion um, and, and find a way forwards from there. Um, well, I'd say that um, one of the challenges, which, which has obviously become more uh, apparent during the pandemic, has been the fact that we need to find a way to maintain our inspiration, our creativity within the resources that we do have, um, and sort of remain open to recalibrating ourselves constantly, which we did find in the pandemic we had to with all the ever-changing guidelines. So I think that's something we've learnt and we need to probably continue beyond the pandemic, a way to uh, remain open to constantly change, um, as, as well as recalibration to new perspectives, um, whether that's the views of our patients, our ca the carers and their families. Um, one of the other challenges uh, that um, myself on rare occasions and some of my colleagues who are South Asian in origin have experienced is still a bit of um, discrimination and racism at times and it can be quite unconscious and we've got to look at how we reduce the unconscious bias. Um, for instance, uh, an appointment letter will go out to the patient and the patient knowing that the name is different, it appears different, they haven't met you, but they'll refuse to see that doctor. And I think in that moment, uh, it just feels like a lost opportunity where you could have really stood alongside that person um, and helped them understand themselves and, and just bring your set of skills that you've been trained for for so many years as a professional. Um, but sadly, you're, you've just become reduced to this name on a piece of paper, which is sad for the professional, but equally that, that patient might have lost out on a certain skill set um, which was available to them. Uh, in the transcultural psychiatric group, um, we've talked a bit about perhaps celebrating the positives and uh, the festivals such as Eid, Diwali um, and, and other festivals from the Afghan community, the Nepalese community, and have a proper integrated way of bringing not only just those who look different together, um, but I think open it up to the whole college and, and have that sort of mixing up of all creeds, races, regardless of who they are, where they come from, but, but that sort of would open up uh, a new way of thinking. Um, for instance, the, the rich textures, the food, the, the music, the languages, the art. Um, so, so there's a lot to celebrate um, together. 
and the, and we all know that there's a lot of South Asian uh, influence on the UK cuisine, uh, cinema, arts and theatre. So I think we need to talk a bit more about that. Um, uh, well, the other the other thing I'd suggest would be the um, uh, looking after the international medical graduates. Um, the college is working towards establishing this as um, a, a whole division where they look after the needs and look after the challenges that the international medical graduates face, whether it's visa, uh, acculturation issues, um, referrals to GMC, um, and, and so on and so forth. So I think there needs to be um, a, a division that looks at this in some detail and some depth, and I'm pleased to, to, to report that a lot of work um, is already being done in the college. Um, so I think that would be something to look out for.